Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Oxford. Another great morning out on Highway 59. So glad that you're all here this morning. And I just want to welcome everyone as others are coming in. Thanks for those who came in front of the tent this week. This is a first. I've never seen so many Baptists so close to the stage in my life. So thanks for being with us this morning. Well, we're glad that you're here on this kind of family oh, service and kickoff oh, service. Hey, oh, oh, hey, Rudy, oh, what, what are you wearing? Uh, Pastor Robin, can you help me with this stuff? Uh, I'm falling over. Here, here, let me take the helmet off you. Thank Just you. a second. Oh, gee. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, thank Sorry. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm I'm wearing sports stuff, of course. What does it look like, Pastor Robin? Ha <laughs> ha. Do you not sport? Uh, uh, uh. You know what, uh, Rudy? You know, I haven't seen you around for a while. Oh, uh, yes. I was on vacation. I got a little bit sunburnt, though. Can you tell? <laughs> well, you know what, Rudy? You're looking good. You had a good summer. We're glad that you're back with us now. And you know what? I That question, do you not sport? Well, I like sports and play a few, but looks like you're kind of drowning in sports stuff here this morning. Well, I heard it was kickoff at the church this Sunday. I wasn't sure what sport we were having to kick off, so I was prepared for everything. I would really like to play. Uh, well, Rudy, the kickoff is, is really a celebration for the start of fall. Uh, yeah. It's not a start of the sp uh, sports games. Our programs and our regular schedule is starting to, again, and we're just having a kickoff party and barbecue to celebrate today as we worship the Lord together. Oh, man. Celebration is a whole different wardrobe. Uh, don't worry, Rudy. We have lots going on here to celebrate. Just stay and, and enjoy the worship service today and then the party-like atmosphere as we have a barbecue together. Sounds great. If I'm going to be honest, Pastor Robin, I'm more the artsy type at heart. Yeah, I, I figured when you asked me, do you sport? Hey, Google said that was a cool thing to say. It, it's probably an online troll. Trolls? Where? Those guys are scary. No, never mind, Rudy. We're getting off track. We don't. We we won't get that settled here right now. Let's get started. We have lo a lot to kick off today. Okay. So let me pray. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather here today to worship and give you praise through song, through your word, uh, through some reports, through a children's craft, and different things that we're doing, Father, just to join us together as we celebrate transformation for generations. Father, we're thankful that you've given us this morning to worship you. And Father, we just praise you. And we just pray that your Holy Spirit would just speak to our hearts today, that we just bless each other as we have conversations and just see one another as well. We praise you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's great to see everybody out here today. Just wondering if you guys all turn around and look way behind you. Can you envision our new church building back there? We can, because we've been working hard um, to bring everything together so that we can get that process started and get some shovels in the ground. Uh, I'm just going to give you an update today on where we're at, at with that. Uh, I'm Rob. This is Jen. We're the co-chairs of the building committee. The rest of the committee members are uh, Brian Ferwerda, Don Lazenby, Allison Hankel, Christine Young, Tony Graham, and Rob Faber. Um, so we just, yeah, I just want to give you a quick update on where things stand because uh, we get quite a few questions about where the process is at. And so uh, the first thing that we're, we're kind of involved with right now, the main thing, is the site plan approval. Uh, we heard back from the township just last week that we're going to hear from them this week with their response. So we're hoping it's a good response, that it's approved. Um, the last time we sent something to them, there's only a few small changes they wanted made, so we're expecting to have a, a positive response this week. And that will be great. Once we get that approval done, we can start moving forward with some other things. So as soon as that is done, we have an excavating company um, 
that has been approved and they are ready to start. And so what's going to happen is they're going to come on site uh, where our cars are parked. They're going to take out all the topsoil and, and put in the foundation for what will be the parking lot. It will be sort of between here and the new building. Fr out to your right, this is all getting turned into sports fields. And so the, the topsoil and the extra material from there is going to be used at the front of the site. So we're using the dirt that's on site so that we don't have extra cost for that. Um, we're going to let that winter so it settles so that we um, have less sort of fill that we need to do come spring. Um, and then once that process is done, the, um, the excavation also does the initial work for putting in the septic um, bed and the tanks and also the fire tank. We have to have a fire tank out here that holds water. So if there was ever a fire, we have our own water supply. So that's all part of the earthworks that will go in um, and we'll start this hopefully this fall as soon as the site plan is approved. And we're also working with some great companies, uh, engineers and architects. And so they're working hard behind the scenes, things that I don't understand. Um, but they're working on some progress drawings for our project. And once they kind of get to the, to the point, we're going to have some big decisions to make as a committee. Really exciting things like which way should the door open? Where do the power outlets go? Um, lighting for the atrium and the auditorium, just really exciting things like that. So we're, we're just waiting for them to come back with, that, with all these questions for us because we're just eager to go and just want to make these important decisions about where light sockets go and stuff. It's great. Um, also, just once all that is done and they're getting close to, to finishing those, those drawings, we'll have everything pretty much in place for a building permit package is what they call that. And so. Once we have enough funds raised and we're getting close to knowing that we're able to start to actually build this building, uh, then we'll submit that building permit package to the township. And so everything is really coming along quite nicely for that. And we're just really going to have to, at some point, get the funds we need to be able to submit that. Thanks, Rob. Am I, oh, leaving me with the difficult conversation. So on to funding. We're proceeding with the funds that we have. Any of the work that we've done so far um, is work that needs to get done regardless. It doesn't get damaged or wrecked if we don't continue right away. So the earthworks can sit over the winter, which is great. We're not doing anything that um, we would have to redo as we wait to raise funds. So we're trying to be really wise with the money that we have. So what we've done is we are basically going to be ready to submit this fall. The total project which we presented to you a year ago was for $4.3 million. And that does the whole building, the parking lot, everything. With the money we've raised so far and the mortgage that the church feels that it can sustainably carry, that leaves us with $1.5 million left to raise. Okay, so we're getting there. We are very thankful for the donations that have come in. The prayers, the pledges that you guys have, have um, been putting forward, speaking with God and understanding what he has called you as a family or as an individual to, to give to this project. And we are thankful for that. We know that God is at work. We do know that there's still a long way to go. 1.5 million is not a small amount of money, but we do know that he is at work and he wants this project to happen. We've seen that in so many ways. And so we are trusting that that money will come in. As soon as it does, we are ready to move. Thank you. Hold it, Rob. What do I f see behind your ear there? Oh, it's $5. The first five dollars, I can't believe I got money out of an accountant today. So this is the first five dollars to be raised for our first transformation challenge. And um, we are going to be breaking that 1.5 into three challenges over the next few months. And I'm representing uh, the campaign team this morning. And this is to give money that is above our regular giving and our pledge toward the building fund. And so our goal by the end of this year, beyond our pledge and regular giving to the general and building fund, is $500,000. That's what we want to raise over the next few months by the end of the year. So we have this kind of thing that we want you to do. The first of all is to pray. We need lots of prayer about this because we need many $5 bills and other bills as well. 
for God to bless us as we move ahead. Some of you have been giving already to the project. You've pledged. Some of you are giving regularly to the pro project as well. Uh, but some of you need to start giving. Um, I'll be honest with you. God does not want you to die rich. He wants you to die generous. And, and one of my friends came up with this slogan, do your giving while you're living so you know where it's going. All of us can give and sacrifice together. In fact, we have all the resources we need to see this completed, our new base of ministry operations. So let's pray. Uh, the next word after pray is find. Look around and find funds you're not using, just like the $5 Rob wasn't using this morning. Okay, God maybe has given you an increase in some way. Tithe on that increase. Look in the cushions of your relatives' couches. Find friends who will give as well. And just find. Ask God to help you to find things. Maybe there's something around your house that you don't need anymore. Sell it. Give it. The next word is save. Instead of going to your overly priced coffee place give what you save because you bought a french press coffee maker and are making coffee at home eat out less skip a meal put off a trip golf twice a week rather than four times and use the money you save to give to the our project all of us need to get serious about our budget and we can give and see things where we can save that we give to the Lord's work. Then there's sell. You and I have things around our house, in the garage, we don't need anymore. Maybe you have, like me, a collection of Barbie dolls sitting in storage in your house. <laughs> Sport cards. Get your dog to have puppies and sell the puppies. <laughs> sell stuff, people. It's all we have to do. And then give. Maybe you're going to give a gift in the next few, few months in memory of something or someone uh, giving a gift. Give something you don't need. Did you know that the average median family income in Oxford County is $76,000 a year? So if we had 200 giving units, that's basically a tithe of $1.5 million. Did you know that? Some make less, some make more, some have double incomes. But the, one of the things that I was reminded of this week, actually in a conversation with my dad, is he was part of a campaign team years ago in our church. They uh, used Malachi 3.10. The only way that the Bible says that we can prove God or test God is in our giving as believers. In fact, Paul says to excel in the grace of giving, 2 Corinthians 8.7. And one of the verses that I've seen come true in my own life over the years that I've been giving to the Lord's work, and that started in my life when I was 15 years old, was this verse out of Luke 6, 38. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I love that verse. Because it says, give and it will be given to you. No matter what you give. If you give anger in your home, guess what you're going to get back? Anger. If you're going to give joy, you receive joy. And, and it's just an amazing verse. So will you take up the challenge over this next few months for this first 500000 towards this 1.5? To pray, to find, to save, to sell, and to give. And I'm hoping that we'll be hearing some testimonies each week in the challenge of how God provided through your life and the resources he's given you. So let's seek the Lord together and build together by finding, saving, selling, giving, and praying, most importantly, as we seek God and see him at work. All right, so I'm going to invite Melissa and Kayla to come up, but they also need some help because we're going to do a song from VBS. So I'd like to invite all the kids to come up and other leaders if they are willing to come up too. <laughs> As uh, was said earlier um, by Sandra, our theme 
as a church, our mission vision is, as a church is to make disciples. A relationship with Jesus Christ changes everything. And our theme for our building project over these next couple of years is transformation for generations. This church started back in 1890 with 40 people who left First Baptist Church and they were sent out from that church to start a church uh, basically on the west end of town. And we're a result of that group of people and their faithfulness and the faithfulness of so many other pastors and leaders and those who volunteered and served within this church. Our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And our church ministry priorities are based on Matthew 28 and Acts 2, where, we've set, where we're trying to set five to seven ministry goals under each of these areas each year. So under worship and prayer, our theme there is honor God by seeking and treasuring him together, or just honor and treasure God as we worship him. Then there's fellowship, love, and compassion where we cultivate authentic community that serves with joy and compassion. It's cultivate loving community. That's what we see in Acts chapter 2. And then there's outreach and evangelism where we want to go and share the gospel for kingdom impact. Go and share Christ both locally and globally as a church. And then discipleship and the word of God where we want to equip God's people to know and respond to God's word and to live the spirit-filled life. So we want to equip you in these areas. Our big vision goal through our local and global mission is to impact 3,000 people with the gospel of Jesus Christ over the next five to 10 years, local, regionally, and globally. Now, the youth, a number of our youth were on a a recent camping trip, and uh, one of the days they fished And they went out and they fished and they caught a number of fish and they had a big fish meal that night. Now, I heard some of the lengths of the fish they caught. And it seems every time I talk to the youth, the fish get bigger that they caught. But they needed nine or ten and they caught all of those fish for that particular day and caught a number throughout the rest of the time that they were there. They were fishing. And the more that I've gone into the wilderness, you might say, the better the fishing it's been. Now, Jesus says something in John 1, 38 to 40. Turning around, Jesus saw them following him and he asked them, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went to where he was staying. They spent the day with him It was about four in the afternoon. Basically, they spent time with Jesus. They came and they were were called by Jesus to come and see who he was. That's maybe the, the first invitation that we have. Come and see who Jesus is. You see, we need to invest in people's lives and invite them. One of my close friends, Gary, has a a nine-word sentence that they've been using at their church now for a little while, and it's amazing how people have been responding to this nine-word sentence. I'd like to invite you to my church. I would like to invite you to my church. People have showed up. People have been going online. And as a result of that, they've been seeing people just start to identify with the community. Over the next number of weeks, we are going to and encourage you to make invitations as we move back into um, the, the school for the winter uh, we want to see a number of things happen we have a number of groups happening we're hoping you start up Christianity Explored for those who are exploring faith and then on September the 12th we're going to begin a new series out here called Experiencing God and then we'll continue that series as we go back, go to the school on October 3rd with services at 9 and 11. So Jesus first says, come and see. Then he says, come and follow him. In Matthew 4, 19, which the text I want to look at this morning briefly, it just says this. In verse 18 of Matthew 4, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. 
They were casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Verse 19, Jesus says, Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Come and follow Jesus. That's Jesus' second invitation, that he wants people to follow him. The amazing thing about Jesus to me is that he practices catch and release. Did you know that? And if you're a fisherman, you need to catch and release at certain times the fish you catch. But Jesus practices catch and release. Come and see Jesus. We begin to follow Jesus. Then he releases us into the world to be the light in the darkness. And more than ever do we need to be light in the darkness these days and be a strong witness for Christ. So he says, come, follow Jesus, and then we are sent out to fish for people. Did you know that followers of Jesus Christ fish? They fish for people. In the parallel passage in Luke chapter 5 and verse 10, Jesus says, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. You know, some people do not want to get hooked to Jesus. I understand that in our culture. But if you're not hooked to Jesus, you are hooked to something else that has hooked you for destruction. And until people hear the good news of the gospel of Christ, they will get hooked in to the things that lead to destruction rather than the things that lead to life or the person that gives us life because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. This morning, I want to finish up with the five-step method to be an effective witness for Christ. You can find it in Colossians chapter 4. And in Colossians chapter 4, there are five things that I want to share with you. And these will be up on the notes with the online as well for you. So you don't have to jot them down, but they will be up there this week for you if you want the notes. But in Colossians chapter 4 and uh, verse 2, it says, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. So the first thing is we are to pray for opportunities to proclaim the gospel because Paul says here, and pray for us too that God may open a door for our message that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. So we are to pray for opportunities, first of all, to proclaim the message, to be watchful and thankful for the opportunities that God gives us to serve other people and to witness to them a word of encouragement or something that that focuses on Christ and what Christ has done in your life. What I'd like you to do practically this week is to write down three friends that you can pray for, uh, that you can witness to, neighbors or nearby relatives, a co-worker, and just ask God for opportunities and open doors to, for you to be a witness for Christ. There will be those who want nothing to do with Christ. That's okay, just go to the next person. I was always taught, because I come from a sales family, that if you didn't get the sale, go to the next person. You'll get the sale eventually. Because there are people that are looking for good news. See, Paul was in prison when he wrote the book of Colossians, so you have no excuse, unless some of you are heading to prison this week. God has given you an incredible freedom to witness for him, to make a difference in somebody's life so that they maybe wake up and say, why did you do that for me? And you have an opportunity that, to share how Christ has changed your life. Secondly, we're to proclaim the gospel clearly. We're to learn the gospel, understand that it is about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that Christ is coming again, and that We are to be ready for his coming. So we are to share the gospel. And to proclaim it clearly means knowing your testimony or knowing a way to share the gospel, a bridge illustration, or as we look at the fall and some days of training that we're going to give so that people can just share the gospel of Jesus Christ naturally in any situation. Thirdly, we are to pray and be wise 
toward outsiders. That's what he says here in verse 5. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity, he says. Pray and be wise. Don't be goofy or what I like to call a jerk Christian. Don't be like that. Talk to them naturally. That, like your, their, your new best friend, be kind. Ask them questions about their story, their family, their work, their religious background. And then ask permission if you can share your story or testimony with them. The fourth thing is pray. You will have conversations full of grace seasoned with salt. Those are conversations that are loving, not condemning. Spoken with truth, that, with love. Not being abrasive. We don't need to be abrasive. With people, with the gospel, we need to love them towards Jesus. And then notice something else. You're to pray so you can answer anyone. Look at verse 6. It says, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. That's an incredible promise. You don't need to go to seminary to answer people. You just need to depend on the Holy Spirit of God and the Word of God and share the gospel with them. I mean, there's a promise in Luke where Jesus says there in Luke uh, verses 1 to 12, I'll let you read the full passage there, but it says, when you're brought before synagogues, rulers and authorities, don't worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you'll say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at the time what you should say. Did you know that the Spirit of God wants to guide your conversations all, every day? In your workplace, are you known as someone who has conversations that are seasoned with salt, with truth, but are full of grace? Are you a person who has conversations with people that help to change the conversation, to bring hope and life into those conversations rather than death, destruction, and darkness? We've seen so much of it over the last 20 years, you know, as, we sell, as people remembered yesterday, 9-11, and all that's happened since then, more than ever, we need to be those lights for the gospel of Christ. You see, we are worshipers. So we come and worship the true and living God. That sets us apart from the world. We are also people who pray. We come before God as people who want to come before Him and pray. We seek Him, His answers, and His wisdom. We are also people, if we are followers of Christ, we are the people who obey the Word of God, and we are the people who are filled and empowered by the Holy Spirit of God as we do our work, as we serve one another, and as we serve the community around us with the love of Christ. And we are people who are the witnesses for Jesus Christ. And we do not need to be ashamed about that. Because our world is dark. And our world needs Jesus Christ. Because a relationship with Jesus Christ changes everything. And this church, since 1890, has had that vision. Because we've been part of a church that has had transformation for generations. Let's pray together. Father, as the team leads us in these songs of worship and as we uh, enjoy some time together in these songs of worship to praise you, we just pray, Father, and we thank you for Sandra's craft today, just a fishing rod with some key things on it. Father, I thank you that you give us key things so that we can be your witnesses. Very clear, practical, just natural things so that we can just have natural conversations with people. Lord, there's lots of hurting people, even here today. And I pray, Father, that you would help us all just to minister to one another, speak to someone we haven't spoken to before, encourage as we can, Father, and lift up and maybe even find out some practical way in which we can minister to someone else. Father, we praise you for your guidance in our lives. We praise you for your grace and favor. 
We bless you today. Bless us as we continue in worship through these songs. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father, thank you so much that you are controlling even the weather today. And Lord, as we pray today, I just thank you for everyone who's joined us. We thank you, Father, for all those who are helping out today, too. And as we uh, enjoy some time together, just bless our conversations. And Father, if there's people we don't know, let's get to know them today. We just thank you, Father, for your, pre your presence with us today, too, through these songs of worship, uh, through the many things that have been shared about our building and, and our challenge before us, too, Father. We thank you that you've been providing all along the way, and we've seen your hand. You have proven yourself faithful. Father, help us by your spirit to be faithful to you in every aspect of our lives as we follow you, Lord Jesus. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I um, think they're about ready back there. And uh, also this morning, if you need to set up giving with the church, um, Arden is here uh, with uh, those sheets for information. If you'd like to be a part of our online church directory and also get weekly emails or maybe two or three a week from us, just updates as well, uh, those are also available too today. So if you like that information or be part of that, uh, please just let staff know at the back. Thanks for being here today. God bless you. Just be out of here by three.